Hey, what's going on? Kashak, how you doing, brother? What's your name, King? David. David? Oh, Damien, Damien, how you doing, man? My name is Hazar. You believe in the Bible, sir? Yeah, here and there, yeah. Yeah, would you call yourself a Christian or do you follow or a follower of Christ? Yeah, follower, yeah. yeah. Is that right? Okay, cool. Who do you think Christ came and died for, man? Us, all of us. All of us? The whole world or for his or for a special people? For, for everyone. For everyone? Yeah. Why would you say? I mean, a lot of people go with that belief, right? I understand that where that doctrine comes from, but that's not biblical. Let me show you something, man. Go, go to uh, John from three to sixteen. Start at fourteen. Oh, this is John three and fourteen. Actually, first give me Matthew five and twenty. Yeah, 15, 20, 24. Uh, this is Matthew 15 and verse 24. Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So these are the words of Christ right here, right? He said, read, read that again. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's saying he didn't come from nobody else but of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, yeah. right? But the Christian church will tell you that he came to die for everyone, which is not true. So who do we who do we got to believe, Damien? Who, who should we believe? Should we believe what the Bible says or what everybody else says? The Bible, up top. Up top, right? So no, by knowing this, by, by, by reading this verse, I'm going to ask you again, who did he come to the earth for? For a special people. For a special people, for the children of who? For the children of Israel. Yeah. Now, what's your background? Say it again? Your ethnic background. Uh, I'm African-American. You're African-American. Yeah. Okay. What if I told you that you're, a, you're of a special people, man? I believe it. You believe it? Go to, Deuteron go to Deuteronomy 28. Start at 15. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Read. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So do you remember the story of Moses? Yeah. Remember he freed the children of Israel, took them to a mountain, right? Yeah. So at this point, he came back down from the mountain to, from talking to an angel, straight to God, right? Talking to an angel, right? So he came back with these laws. Right, because all these people were just freed out out of Egypt, right, out of a slavery. Now he said, "Read that again." For fifteen. Con, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all His commandments and His statutes, which I command thee this day. Read that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He's saying, if you don't follow these laws that I'm bringing you from God right now, all these punishments shall come and over and overtake your people. Read verse sixteen. Verse 16, it says, Cursed shalt thou be, cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. He said, Your people, if you don't follow my law, such as commandments, you're gonna be punished. You, it doesn't matter if you're in the inner city or out in the fields, you're gonna be under under these certain punishments. And he said that your people are gonna be cursed in the fields. What does that sound like to you? Who was cursed in the fields? Do we got do we got any images of that? During slavery, right? We're, your ancestors were actually cursed, uh, cursed in the field, under the, under the the, the rule of white people. Give me verse, give me the main one. Uh, verse sixty-eight. Read. Right. It says, "And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships." He said, "The Lord is going to bring you into Egypt again with ships." Read. By the way, wherever I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So this is special. There's a, there's a certain meaning about Egypt, right? The children of Israel recognized what Egypt meant to them people, right? To our people. Read. Give me, uh, give me what I need. God, this is Exodus 20 and 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt represented slavery to the Israelites, Bro. right? So he's, God said, if you Bro. break my laws... Go back to it. Con. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He said, I'm going to bring you into bondage again with ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Uh-huh. You can say, because he had promised to Israel, you're not going to see actual Egypt no more. 
right? But he said, I'm going to bring you into bondage again with Egypt, right? Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And once, once you get off those slave ships, you're going to be sold unto your enemies. Read. For bondmen and bondwomen. What does that sound like to you? Rich. Huh? Doesn't that sound? Doesn't that sound like the the transatlantic slave trade? Like, how did your ancestors get here to America, right? On slave ships, and once they got here, they got sold to the enemy. So, who's your enemy? In this sense, right? Because they bought. As soon as your ancestors got over here, they bought your ancestors, sold your ancestors, just like this prophecy says. Right? Keep reading. Con. And uh, ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, uh -huh. and no man shall buy you. He said, in that sense, no one's going to redeem you in that in that point, man. Right? right? Because in antiquity, right, that word well, redeem, that means that somebody that can actually take you out of this situation. But no one had took your ancestors out of this situation because God didn't send it. They didn't send nobody to take you out of that captivity. But guess what? Our people are still in captivity to this point. Right now, yeah, man. To this, day, yeah. to this day, right? Oh yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Verse nineteen: The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. That's a doctrine of life. Read. And they that do things that please Him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law. And the knowledge of his omnipotency, and that's it, it, that's how you get the uh, uh, the wisdom of the Lord, man, right? But it all starts with the fear of uh, the fear of God, and the Christian church doesn't teach us how to fear how to fear the Lord. Read that. Well, this is Ecclesiastes 12 in the Good News translation. It mm -hmm. says, so remember your Creator while you are still young. Oh, what was that Ecclesiastes? Yeah. Oh yeah, keep read, read that all the way through. So remember your creator while you are still young uh -huh. Before those dismissal days and years come When you shall say, I don't enjoy life How old are you, my brother? I'm 19 19, you're a young man, right? So remember the creator now, right? Not when your party days are over Because it's going to go into it right here, read Read the whole thing? Yeah Con. It's, uh, Verse 2, it says that And when the light of the sun, the moon, and the stars will grow dim for you uh -huh. and the rain clouds will never pass away this is talking about before judgment or before those dark days come right read then your arms that have protected you will tremble uh -huh. and your legs now strong will grow weak when your teeth will be too few to chew your food and your eyes too dim to see clearly so why remember the creator when you're an old man we start remembering and thinking about the creator now as while you're a young man right read on your ears will be deaf to the noise of the street. Uh -huh. You will barely be able to hear the mill as it grinds or music as it plays. But even the song of a bird will wake you from sleep. You will be afraid of high places and walking will be dangerous. Your hair will turn white. You will hardly be able to drag yourself along and all desire will have gone. We are going to our final resting place and then there will be mourning in the streets. Mm -hmm. it, 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 there's going to be mourning in the streets. This is talking about when the judgment comes. You don't want, you don't want to be late on that train, man. Basically, right? Keep reading. Uh, verse seven: Our bodies will return to the dust of the earth. Because our bodies are going to return to the dust of the Lord. The, the, mo the Most High God had decreed that upon all flesh. We're all going to die at one point, right? Read. And the breath of life will go back to God. Uh huh. He gave it to us. Useless, useless, said the philosopher. It's all useless. Mm hmm. But because the philosopher was wise, he kept on teaching the people what he knew. He studied proverbs and honestly tested their truth. Keep reading? Yeah. The philosopher tried to find comforting words, but the words he wrote were honest. <laughs> That's Please. it. That's it. I wanted you to read the, uh, the KGB on that, but it's, it. but it's good. So basically, it's, it's better right now to start actually thinking about the Lord now. Before those dark days comes or before your old age comes, right? Because the Lord deserves that, man. Right? Because we, once we understand that we descend from the people of the Bible... Then we're going to start seeing what he actually did for us in antiquity, man. Right? This is a, this is a vengeful God that hates all nations that have oppressed his people, man. Right? Give me that. Surah 5. Surah 5. Mm -hmm. Right? It says, say not, in thy, 
Set not thy heart upon thy good. Read. And say not, I have enough for my life. Uh -huh. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. So don't, it's basically, it's, don't be walking in it however you see fit in this world. Because a lot of our people do that. Right? Read. And say not, who shall control me for my works? It said, don't, who, who's going to control me for my works? Because a lot of our people have been sinning forever, right? And some of our people have, still haven't been punished for it. But we got to understand, blessings and his vengeance comes from the same, from the same deity, from the same God, our Father. Read. It says, for the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. The Lord is going to surely revenge their pride. At one point or another, their, their judgment is going to touch them, right? Read. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm has happened to me, uh -huh. unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Our God is very long-suffering, but he is a just God. If you break his law, statutes, and commandments, he's going to punish you at one point or another. Yeah. Read. Concerning propitiation. Concerning appeasing this God. Read. Be not without fear to add sin unto he sin. He said, don't be without fear without sin, adding sin unto sin, because that's what a lot of our people do. Well, he will forgive me. We understand he's a, he's, he's a forgiving yeah. God. But keep reading. Con. It says, and say not his mercy is great. Uh -huh. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. Read. For mercy and wrath come from him. We got to understand this right here, that both mercy and wrath come from this, from this God. Man. Read. And his indignation rested upon sinners. And his indignation rested upon sinners. You know what sin is? Something we're supposed to do. Exactly, right? But more importantly, the Bible literally tells us that sin... <laughs> Is breaking God's laws. You got that? First John three and four. It's First John three and four. Mm -hmm. It says, "Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law." Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. This is, our, our people need to understand what exactly sin is. Because if you ask a Christian, they won't even know what sin is. They'll tell you some crazy missing a spot or, 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 or <laughs> missing the mark. Missing the mark. The mark. The Bi they don't read the Bible. The Bible literally tells us breaking God's laws is sin. The Bible also tell us, it tells us that wages of sin are death. And I'm sure you don't, I'm sure, Damien, you don't want to die, right? You want to actually live. The Bible tells us to choose life over death, bro. Right? Rule four. So, yeah. No, and, 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 and understanding this, man, then, then by understanding all these things, we can look at our people and we can see the actual root issue of within, what's happening within our communities, man, right? Because we need healing, man, right? Because our people went through captivity, our people went through slavery, colonization, stripped of our, of our identity, and our people are still suffering to this day behind it, man, right? And there's no healing other but God's law, statutes, and commandments, for you. I got uh, Matthew 7, 24. Mm -hmm. This is the words of Jesus. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Mm -hmm. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built upon bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it uh -huh. is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rain and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So just referencing what he said earlier, seeking the most high when you're young, you're 19. I said, I wish I knew this when I was 19. I, I, I figured I wouldn't have my 30s, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, what was I doing this whole time? But you know, the long surfing of God preserved me to learn it at the time he knew I was ready for it. Absolutely. I mean? So the moral of this particular context is that building your house on a solid foundation, when things get thrown at you, when things get introduced to you, when the new information comes about, you're not gonna waver and fall off and then by the time I said the judgment comes, you might not be a part of that because God already knows, okay, he's on this side of the fence. You know what I mean? He's gonna he's gonna be spared and have mercy upon that particular time frame. That's what that's what this, I just read as far as who Jesus uh says who listens to him, because Jesus was what sent by the Father to do exactly the Father's will with his teach, teach commandments as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that and, and that whole parable was was very deep too, because it goes into other people that hear the word, right? But don't build their, their 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 house on solid foundation. That means, and when, when when certain things happen, they fall off, or you know what I'm saying. That's when it goes about uh, yeah. uh, building a house on on uh, rock, 
the, the exactly. seed didn't grab, you know what I mean? Yeah, or so, if somebody, you know, or you might be going through affliction. Like, man, I thought God loved me. I was going home. I'm going through hell right now. We were seeing a brother that was homeless earlier that said he knew about the information. We would think, okay, well, I mean, what's going on? Are you still keeping the commandments? Are you still, you know, he said he was. So that's all we can go off of. But he's going through real, like, you know, torment. Real, real torment. Turmoil is going to call it that. I wouldn't say torment, but turmoil. Being homeless is a heavy thing, you know what I mean? So I'm just saying as far as you can't waver even in that time. In that point, exactly. You know I mean? So it's all up here, and obviously when the most high just bestows the spirit on you, you shouldn't waver from that. You know what I mean? You don't know what's going to happen, but when it's, once it's instilled in you, you learn the truth and you grow in the knowledge, you know what I mean? This is this is where I'm supposed to be. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen from here on out with you, you know what I mean? Exactly. We're just playing the seed, and hopefully the most high can water that seed and you can be that tree of righteousness, you know what I mean? Exactly, and, uh, and, and, and by also taking this information, and like I said, then you start seeing what our people needs in our community, right? Because a lot of our people are living like in, in, in the individual mind state, you know what I'm saying? Because they stripped that, they stripped that from us during slavery, man, right? Our people need to start actually living in the nation mindset, in the community set, you know what I'm saying? Because we are a community people, we, that's how we were supposed to be. Right, not only just caring about oneself, we're gonna have to actually because that's what that's literally in the laws, man. Right, love your neighbor as yourself, your brother, right? Your, your people of your own people. You know what I mean? No, I you got them? No. You got any questions, bro? Uh, not really. All right. You, you well, know, just like taking in the info. All right. All praises to the Most High, man. So, what do you think now? So, what are you? You're an Israelite, right? All right, let me tell you something, man. You come from a powerful tribe, man. You come from the same tribe that Christ came from, right? Which is a world tribe, right? So by knowing this, go back to Deuteronomy 12, 10 and 12, because I need to finish that. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Uh huh. Right, it says, And now, Israel, mm -hmm. what does the Lord thy God require of thee? He said, What does God require of you, Damien Reed? But to fear the Lord thy God. Uh huh. We already went where exactly fearing the Lord is. Right? Fearing the Lord is the first step of him accepting you. Right, Reed? To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. The ways that he set up for us, which is his law, statutes, and commandments. These commandments that we broke, right? And the consequences that we're living under from breaking these laws today. We see it today. That's why we're getting gunned down in the street by police. That's why we're gunning each other down, right? All these things are happening because we broke God's laws, Reed. To walk in all his ways uh -huh. and to love him. And to love him. Our people don't know. That's another thing. Our people don't know what loving God is, man. Right? Read. And to serve the Lord thy God. We have, we have to serve Yahweh, which is his real name in the Hebrew. God's name is Yahweh, for you to understand. And his son is Yahweh, shall I read? With all thy heart and with all thy soul. With all thy heart and all thy soul. We got to understand also that this was written in Hebrew. The heart means our mind, right? Read. With all thy heart and with all thy soul, uh -huh. to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day uh -huh. for thy good. So, right here, he's telling us how to love him is by doing his commandments, keeping his commandments. Because our God told us, if you love me, this is, what, this is how you show you love me. Yeah. Right? Because we're in the Western mind state, especially in English, right? Love is just an, an emotion in English. But in the Hebrew, it's an action. An action is loving Yahweh is what? First John 5? 1 John 5 and 4. Uh-huh. Oh, 1 John 5 and 3. Uh-huh. For this is the love Start of God. Start at 2. Uh, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. Uh-huh. When we love God. Because he commanded us what? To love each other as ourselves, right? Read. When we love God and keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. This is how we love the children of God and love our God by keeping his commandments, read. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God, Damien, read. That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That means his commandments is not a heavy thing, man, right? It's simple. Might be hard at first, but simple and hard, we, it's sim simple and easy are two different things. We understand that, right? His, his laws are direct, right? For example, do you eat pork? Good thing, that's a good thing. Right, because that's against that's against our God's laws, man. Right? What about seafood? You like crabs and stuff? Seafood, I don't really eat it. I don't, I don't eat it too much. It's a dirty animal. You understand those animals yeah, are really disgusting, huh? Right? Like, 
That's good that you don't eat pork. You understand that that animal is disgusting. We don't eat it first and foremost because our God told us not to eat it, right? It, us knowing that it's a disgusting animal and it, eat anything, that's secondary. But primary, we don't eat, we, we don't eat these things because our God told us to. Now, there's benefits of not eating these things. Like, for example, like the Asians, the Chinese man will eat anything. <laughs> them, them, them dudes will eat a bat, yeah, armadillos, they'll eat anything. But for example, but, but this proves this proves something though, right? When they eat it, nothing happens to them. But when we eat it, we get sick, right? Why? Because our God, we are God's chosen people, and He told us not to eat these things. That's why in our communities, our families are got diabetes, high blood pressure, because we were raised on pork. We were raised on all this madness that we're not supposed to be eating, and it's slave food, right? Man, our people still eat chitlins. That's crazy. I just seen a video on TikTok, man. Yeah, that that you woman. Young, right? <laughs> that's all crazy. Damien is like, hell no. Nah. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. But it be but it be a disgusting that that's secondary, man. First and foremost, we don't eat it because your how your God told you not to eat it. Right? And our God told us to keep his commandments if we love him. Those are just small things, man. Right? And you you believe in the son. You believe he oh, let me ask you a question. Is Christ God? That's another, that's another thing that the, that the church has taught us also. Is Jesus God? No, it's the son, son of God. It's the son of God, correct. See, I don't know, our brother, our little brother knows, he at least knows that, man. That's he, true. You know what I mean? Do you go to church? Yeah, I'll be going with my grandma here. Oh, okay. There. To like a Christian church, die a Christian church? Kind of, kind of. You, you, learn, you learn a lot in there? So far. You fall asleep? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, we, we you probably fall asleep. You know, I know, I know. Yeah, man. Uh, besides that, our, uh, that church, our, you know, when these churches had, uh, had uh, like when the first churches happened, right? Right after slavery, right? Ex that, that's exactly when, they, especially like the black churches, like what was that AME, AME churches? Yeah, they formed in slavery, in slavery. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in slavery, correct. Literally. And they gave us what the slave Bible. Yeah, what they gave us. Yep. The Bible isn't an issue, it's just the doctrine now. That's what it is. The teaching, what they, what they teach you is the cancer. Like, the Bible itself isn't a cancer. Exactly. They can, they can read whatever, but exactly. Like, we, like, if you go online, you got this flyer, right? If you go on YouTube, we talk to Christians all the time. You'll see a thousand videos of us dialoguing with Christians, even Muslims. And then we just test the information because we know what they believe already. And we used to think that way as well. So it's kind of, okay, let me just ask you what you already know, and we're going to test compared to what the Bible says. And of course, it's going to be like, okay, well, damn, it doesn't really say that after all. But they're so stuck in their in their, in their doctrine, you know what I mean? This cognitive dissonance, like, I, oh, I got to go, or I don't want to learn. They can't learn them because they already saved, per se, which is another flawed ideology. Exactly. And the church doesn't, doesn't teach you to keep God's laws. They, they'll tell you Christ kept the laws for you, Right? Which is a big lie also, right? Give me Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. And I'll leave you with this too, right? I'll leave you with this also, right? What's going on, brothers? Why is that? Uh. So, read that for me? Yeah. So it's Matthew 5 and 17. So right? these are the words of Christ, man. I mean, we said we were followers of Christ, right? Read. It says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. But the Christian church that you might go to might tell you, well, Christ kept the law for you. You don't got to keep the law no more. But let's see what the word, the words of Christ says, right? Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He didn't come to destroy the laws, but he came to fulfill, right? Read. For verily I say unto you, shall heaven... And earth pass. And until heaven and earth pass, we see that we're walking under heaven and we're walking upon earth, right? None of the heaven and earth still haven't passed. Read. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Until all be fulfilled. Nothing, all hasn't been fulfilled yet because he still has to return. All right, you brothers, y'all take care, all right? Read. Whosoever therefore shall break. One of the least, these least commandments, uh -huh. and shall teach men so. And those that break the commandments and teach men so, the Christian church tells us we don't got to keep God's laws no more. Read. 
He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But they're going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them. But those that do actually keep God's laws and also teaches his brother to keep, to keep his laws. Read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The same. Those people are going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right. So this is proof that the Christian church, they don't teach us the truth. Right. So we have to keep God's laws. If we, if we love Christ, if we love God and His Son, we do, we keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments, right? You got any questions, Amy? All right, it's good talking to you, my brother. All praises, man. Yup. So we got, we got our information right there on the, um, on the flyer. You ever go down to San Francisco? San Francisco, every once in a while. All right. Yeah, but we're going to be out here more often also. We we be on 16th and Mission also, but you can watch us on YouTube. We got we got plenty of videos, so we got different channels also, right? We got all the information right there on the flyer here. All praises, Daniel.